Thanks for joining Amy Lee Online again tonight. Tonight's edition of Amy Lee Online is all about camera basics and we're going to do part three of a part four series that I've put together to help you go from shooting on man auto to manual and manual mode and today's uh, video tutorial is all about aperture and f-stop and understanding that in, an, in a very easy way to help you on your way to shooting in manual mode. So what is aperture? or f-stop. Basically, aperture is the third way that we control light coming into the camera. And we do that by changing the size of the camera's lens, as you can see on my diagram to the right. Aperture is how big or small the hole called aperture can go. Obviously, as I said, this hole is called aperture and it's the place where the light actually enters the camera. So we have our lens, the light goes into the lens and hits the sensor through our shutter and how, how much light is allowed in is determined by the aperture, which is the size of that hole that is made by the shutter. Obviously the bigger the hole, the more light is allowed into the camera. So the smaller the hole, the less light is allowed into the camera. Meaning, let's say you wanted to shoot a, a landscape and you wanted to make sure that you had the sky nice and blue, you would need to have a small aperture for that shot, f8 or above, because you don't want the light to blow out your sky and make it white or cream and not have that beautiful blue color. So you want to always stick to the f8 and above for a blue sky. Okay, and that means having a small aperture. The scale that we use to measure aperture is the f, f number scale. Okay, so that's where f stop comes in. As you can see to my right, I have got some images here that I've taken uh, for a wedding and I used the f-stop 2.8 to create an image where there was a lot of blur and just enough light in to show a softer image of the rings and the perfume. A lower f-stop means a larger or wider aperture. Okay, so this is a crazy photography world where the larger the number, the smaller the aperture, and the smaller the number, the larger the aperture. So that's a concept we have to kind of get our head around in, in uh, our crazy world of photography. So for example, 1.2 or 2.8 are larger and wider aperture. Okay, so f-stops that are indicated by these numbers are on your camera in increments of say 1.2, 1.4, f2, f2.8, f4, f5.6 and so on. So you can see those numbers on the back of your camera or on the top view of your camera in the view window and you can see which one you need for the for the shot. The smaller the aperture you would go to f8, f11, f16 and that will be quite a small opening in your shutter that would create less light coming in and you would be able to capture deeper colors using that you would also have a lot more in focus in your shot. Let's talk about that for a minute. The wider the aperture opening the more light will enter and the, the wider is obviously the smaller numbers. So the smaller the aperture opening the less light will enter. Okay so as long as you've got that concept you can actually then start to work it. When shooting at a lower f-stop the in focus part of the shot as we saw in those previous images will be smaller. The background will actually be blurry and that's what we call bokeh. And this is great for portraits and flowers and still life and those little moments of time that you need to capture at pre-wedding shoots such as the bridal party getting ready and you know the, the wedding rings and the shoes and the clothing and the makeup and things like that.
it's also good for portraits so that you can have a lot of it a lot of the background fall away and become um, bokeh and that's why I like to use some of that in my portraiture um, for instance this Hollywood glamour shot that I used I went down to 1.8 for this shot uh, on a 50 millimeter camera just to make sure just to get the beautiful uh, eyelashes and the makeup I wanted just the face in focus that's all I wanted I wanted everything else to be slightly blurred out and uh, smoother than her face because I was concentrating on making this look like an old film noir Hollywood style shot and I really loved it so um, if I wanted to get more of the background in focus um, I would go up to f8 or something like that in outdoors in a sunny day in that way um, I would have more of my landscape in focus as well as my couple so if you have a smaller ap aperture f8 and above that will obviously as I said cause the background to be more in focus and this is really great for shooting families interior buildings and street life things like that so each lens that you get is marked with the f-stop number meaning that the number on the lens is the biggest the opening your lens can accommodate or open up to so that's the number that it can go the lower the number the better the lens in that case as in you know the the more it can actually do if you've got a, a 50 millimeter 1.2 L series Canon lens and that's you know uh, as I said I use Canon so I can talk about Canon um, those lenses would be the wider lens or a wider aperture so your f number f stop numbers can go really low and they have a lot more optics in them to achieve what their aperture size needs to be and that's why they're so expensive most kit lenses that come stock standard with your camera straight from the store such as um, your 18 to 55 millimeter lens that can pretty much only go down to 3.5. It might be a great idea, an investment idea, to buy a lens that has the capabilities of going as wide as possible, like to 1.2. You don't shoot a lot of the time in that, but it is, does come in handy when you want to be creative and do some creative images. Here is some images that I have taken over the years and one of them down on the left-hand side, the lower image of the couple on the beach, we shot at f8. The sun was coming up. It was early, early in the morning. So the, sc the sky on the right was actually really white. There was no color in it because of the brightness of the sun coming up over the horizon. Um, but you can see on the left hand part of the image that the, the sky that isn't affected by the sun so much is quite blue. And I shot that at f8. And then on the other side here, you can see and also too on that image you can see that the landscape goes all the way back and you can see it's pretty clear except for the haze off the beach so on this image on the right hand side I've also shot that at f8 and you can see all the detail of everything in the landscape all the way back to the trees and that's what it, shooting at f8 does it allows you to collect a lot of color and also your camera will pick up all the detail throughout the image now in the top image here on the left I've gone to f4 for the portrait to um, make sure that I have her completely in focus, her whole body and also I just wanted the background to blur out slightly. I didn't want it to be too smooth, I just wanted it to be detailed enough to see that we are in an orchid, orchard and that I'm using the leading lines there of the trees to, to capture quite a pretty shot of this model at f4.0. How do we set up an f-stop on your camera? Well first we need to turn the camera to manual. That's the dial on the left hand side on top of your camera that has all of the actions for the camera. So you can have it at TV, AV, SS, M, bulb and so on and so forth. I want you to turn that to M for manual mode. Then you want to start with your ISO set up your shot through how much light look around how much light do you need go back to the first video on ISO and work out how to set your ISO how much light do you need coming into the image how bright is the day or how dark is the day set up the shutter speed on your camera so do you want to shoot your image in freezing and freezing the moment 
or do you want to have some motion in mo movement in the shot? And then find the f-stop number that you are looking for. So do you want to have your, if it's a bright day, do you want to have your image with lots of light coming through, not much light coming through? Do you want to have a lot of detail in the image or do you want to have a lot of bokeh or blur in the background? And you can see in on the back of your camera that the aperture is represented by the F number on the camera. So it's very easy to find on the back. It's F represented by F and then a number. You can change that by highlighting that on your camera and using the dial above the click button to take the picture. And that dial by turning it left or right will actually change the number of your f-stop. If you have a camera that has the view window on top of the camera you can find it next to your shutter speed and it is represented just by the number 4.0, 2.8, whatever the lens can accommodate. So I hope you have a better understanding of Aperture now and thank you so much for watching this video. I've tried to explain it in the most simplest terms possible for you so that even the most earliest of beginners can understand how to set an aperture, what it means, and what the f-stop number scale is. And if you go back and watch the ISO and shutter speed video, and then also watch this one in sequence, we will then be able to go to part four and do a really great video on understanding how to put it all together. And your understanding of that will be quite clear. And hopefully by the end of that, you'll be able to shoot on manual, no problem at all. So remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. I want to make sure that you are always getting the updates and notifications of my latest videos. If you like the video, it tells me that you are enjoying what you're hearing and seeing. So I will produce more of the same. And remember to share the video as well so that everybody can benefit from this information. And I'll see you soon for part four of putting it all together to shoot in manual mode. And remember, Love what you do and do what you love and remember you'll never work a day in your life. Bye for now. So hi guys. Thanks for joining me.